So uh, Antoine Blay from uh, ENAC will present us uh, using GNU Radio Companion to improve student understanding of signal processing theory through VHF omni directional range signal demodulation. Oof. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, this is a very long title. Thank you. That is a very long title. Um, so I'm Andran Blay, and I will present this work, which was done with my colleague, Christoph Morlas. So please let me introduce the subject. So as teachers, we have, uh, from our experience, we have seen that the complex notions which are being taught during the signal theory and the signal processing courses, well, they need to find some practical realization for the student to clearly understand what they are. So often we give some practicals to focus on specific points. However, there was also a need for a larger project to, to make the student understanding why these courses are in their uh, timetable. Um, so this was done using a long project form, which gives time to the students to build by themselves a VOR, a VOR uh, receiver. So in fact, um, we give the students a DVB-T USB dongle, one dongle per pair of students, and we ask them to produce a VOR receiver using the new radio companion software. So please note that, that um, the learning of GRC is not the main purpose of this uh, project. What is interesting for us is the signal theory point of view. Okay? New radio is an interesting aside, however, it's not the main goal of this project. It's a wonderful software, that's why we use it. However, we want to focus on signal theory and signal processing. So this presentation provides insight into this long project. Here is the outline of my presentation. First of all, I'm going to present a model of the VOR signal to clearly understand what we are going to process as a signal. Then I will focus on what was important for us, that is the pedagogical approach. In a third step, I will detail two interesting technical points the students have to cope with. And finally, of course, I will draw some conclusions. So first, let me give you a model of the VOR signal, uh, because we want to establish this as a starting point of the project. So the VOR system is a navigation aid which is designed, as it is written here, to give the angle in relation to the magnetic north to the aircraft from a ground radio station of a known position. In this way, the pilot can nav navigate towards the beacon or, or from it. To transmit this angle, the VOR beacon simultaneously transmits two 30 hertz signal components, one with a constant phase, whatever the direction in which it is received. And the second one, with a phase which consistently varies according to the direction in which it is received. The onboard receiver, of course, has to measure this phase difference to display it to the pilot so that he knows the angle in which it is na he is navigating. So I have a graphical illustration here from this website. Okay. You can imagine that at the center you have the beacon and your aircraft is in some direction. 
For example, let me take the 145 direction as an example. You have 230 Hz components, which are then shifted by this angle when received on board. In this way, the pilot knows that it is in this angle from the beacon. Obviously, the 230 Hz component are not transmitted as is because we would need very large size antenna. That is why, in fact, the 230 Hz components are transmitted via an hybrid signal which is uh, modulating in amplitude a carrier frequency. So we give the students a time model of the signal. Oh, sorry. Um. So we give the students this time model of the signal which is transmitted. You can see that it is an amplitude modulation here. M of t is carrying the angle of interest. We have a carrier frequency here with a high frequency term which lies in the VHF band and more specifically in this range of frequency, 108 to 118 megahertz. Let me detail the hybrid signal now because it is the one which carries the information. First of all, at the top, we have a first cosine term at 30 Hertz, which carries the QDR. So the QDR is the angle of interest. It is the magnetic bearing from the station to the aircraft. So it is carried by this 30 Hertz component. Then we have a second term, which is carried by a 1,020 hertz carrier, which is the identification of the VOR beacon. Because when the pilot on board select a specific frequency to select a corresponding VOR beacon, he can make an error. This identification code, which is a Morse code, is here for him to check that he is on the correct beacon. It's for safety reason, of course. Then we have a third term here, which is carried by a 9,960 Hertz carrier with a phase term here, which is varying in time. In fact, as we can see in this detailed expression, we can see that it is an integral sum of a time varying cosine at a frequency of 30 Hertz also. Hence, it is a frequency modulation signal which carries this second 30 Hertz component. What is to be noted here is that this first 30 Hertz component and this second one has the same initial random phase here because they are from the same oscillator. And then inside the receiver, if you are able to recover this first cosine and this second one, well, you just have to make the difference between the two arguments here and here to recover the angle of interest, the QDR. It is the job of the receiver to make the difference between these two arguments to recover the QDR and to display it to the pilot. Yes, a short note here to mention that this QDR term, the angle term, can be in this cosine instead of this one. From the receiver point of view, it makes absolutely no difference. It's just a different VOR beacon technology. For the students, this time model 
is quite complex to handle. And at this point, it is an opportunity for us, the teachers, to show them that when the time description of a signal is too complex, maybe in frequency it's much simpler. And that's why we give them this synthetic representation of the PSD, the spectrum of the baseband for VOR signal. We can clearly see that the different time component, in fact, in this spectral view, are distinct, separate. Here we have the line at zero, which is due to the one plus M of T. We have the two lines here corresponding to the first 30 Hertz component. We have a line here, which in fact is slowly modulated by the Morse code. And of course we have the frequency modulation term here around 9,960 Hertz, which embed the second 30 Hertz component. An interesting side of this spectral view is that we can tell the student that the bandwidth of this term is plus or minus 480 Hertz. Then we can focus on the fact that here we can safely limit the bandwidth of this signal to 12 kilohertz. In fact, it is slightly less, but we can have a small amount in excess without any difficulty. Having this model set, we can begin to work on the signal, not only to receive it, but as we shall see, to build it. And it's time for me to focus maybe on what was the most important, that is the pedagogical approach. In fact, facing this wide project to build a full receiver, the students are completely lost. That's why we have decided to put them very strong guidelines so that they can go safely and quietly to the end of the project, that is, a working VOR receiver. Our first step is an interactive implementation of a simple FM radio broadcast receiver. In a second step, we ask the students to produce their own flow diagrams to first read, then display, and lastly, record to a file the IQ samples which are output by the DVBT USB dongle. And in a last, uh, sorry, in a third step, we ask the student to produce an ion Q VOR signal generator. Lastly, they have to develop their own VOR receiver. So this first step about the FM radio broadcast broadcast receiver, well, it serves two main purposes. First purpose is to present the DRC guy capabilities. As it is a very user-friendly guy, in one step, they know how to use it. And this is a very interesting point in using new radio companion from the teacher point of view, we don't have to spend a lot of time on this guy. It works naturally. Then the second objective of this step is to prove the students that the software defined radio concept works. In fact, when they first hear the radio output of the speakers of the computer, it's really astonishing for, um, for them. At this point, they had only theoretical courses. This is the first time they understand that, well, signal theory and signal processing, you can do real, real things with it. And it's a great motivation for the rest 
of the project for them. So I don't detail this flow diagram. You can see it's rather simple. And in fact, for the fastest of them, it takes 10 minutes to build it. For the slowest, let's say 20 minutes. OK? Ah, sorry. So the second step is on their own to build some flow diagram. The aim here is to give them a more comprehensive handling of GRC and also of the USB uh, DVB-T dongle. They have to produce so their own diagrams, which in turn, first of all, read the samples, display them, and also record them. The recording point is specifically very interesting because we can broadcast one time a VOR signal, they record it, and then they will be able to play it again to test their own receiver. The third step is about their own IonQ VOR signal generator. We provide them with a detailed synoptic view, and they have to build it component after component, so that at the end, they are able to generate, generate synthetic test signals. This is especially important because not only in this way they understand the VOR signal structure, but also they will be able to test with their own signals their own receiver. Lastly, the VOR receiver. So this is, this is the real aim of the project. Here again, we give them a very detailed view of the receiver to help them build it. As you can see, we have two black box here, the FM demodulation mo um, box and the phase comparator, comparator box. More on this later. At this step, they are fully on their own. They have to build this on their own, and they also have to test it on their own with their own generator. To motivate them a little bit more, we give them this uh, visualization tool, which is a software course deviation indicator, a CDI. In fact, it is a tool with which you are able to see your deviation from the course to the beacon you have selected. With this OPS button, you can select, by rotating the outer ring, you can select the QDR you want. For example, if you want to select, as in my previous example, if you want to select the 135 degree QDR, you do it with this OBS button, and this line here will deviate from the center according to the position of your aircraft from this angle. So it is written in Python, and it is communicating with GRC using a 0MQ socket. It is interesting for the student because it helps them understanding how it works in a real aircraft. Okay? This is not just signal processing. This time it is also inside an aircraft. Of course, as we are in a school, we have some evaluation because we have to give a grade but it is not the main point of this project, of course, as you have understood it. We have a double point evaluation. First, a one hour written examination to check 
that the main signal processing points have been understood. But from our point of view, the main point, the most interesting part is in the real test, the second point of evaluation. In fact, we have a test of reception of a real VOR signal with a QDR to decode. In fact, the teachers, that is me and my colleague, inside the room, we radiate with a low power a VOR signal using a Marconi 2030 signal generator. The QDR is set randomly by ourselves and the students have to decode it. That is, in fact, they have to use their own dongle, their own GRC flow diagram, and when they have demodulated the signal, they just, to, uh, they just have to announce it. Is it correct? It's nice. Obviously, if it's not correct, we don't give them a grade of zero, okay? It's not the aim, okay? <laughs> We work with them on, the, on, on their problem, okay? The aim is that at the end, they have a, a working <coughs> flow diagram which displays the correct value. We want to help them understanding where they made a mistake. At the end, they're happy because they have something which works. And we also are happy because we know that they have understood um, the signal processing problem. So, maybe now I shall focus on two interesting technical points. Um, as you have understood, the philosophy of this project is to make students understanding signal processing. That is why we forbid the use of uh, high level blocks like the FM demodulation blocks which is a, uh, available in um, new radio companion. We force the student to build their own block and from this point of view there are two blocks which are especially interesting the frequency demodulation block and the phase comparator block. So, some words about the FM demodulation. This time, also, we give a synoptic view of one demodulation method among others. The students have not only to implement this, but to understand how it works. Because here, as you can see, there is a variable which is unknown, which is a delay. So, as you are not students, I can explain you in detail how we can calculate this, this delay. Okay? So, S of T is the incoming, incoming signal. Okay? It is an, a frequency modulated um, signal carrying the 30 hertz components of interest. We can multiply this signal by its delayed version. So, we have a product of cosine. Which can, which can be split in a difference of two cosine terms. Inside the argument, you have either the difference of the argument or the sum. What is interesting here is that we can see that they are frequency separated. Here, this term in frequency is located around two times 9,960 hertz. This term here is located around the frequency of theta, which maybe you remember is a 30 hertz signal. So in fact, we can delete this term easily with a 30 hertz bandpass filter. That is, sorry, at the output of this filter here, we can consider that only, only the first term here remains. 
What is more, we tell the students that it could be a good idea if this phase term here could be equal to pi over 2, modulo pi, of course. Then, in this way here, we can convert this cosine term into a sine term. Obviously, there is a trap here. Here, tau should be a multiple of the sampling period. And it happens that you cannot find exactly pi over 2. And, uh, well, it asks questions to the students. You know they are used to math with the exactness of math. And here we think that it is a first step toward their uh, future work of engineer. They have to, well, cope with reality. And in fact, here, they have to accept that this is, that this is just approximately true. When it's done, there is a second step. Here, we have a difference of two terms at 30 Hertz. We suggest them that it would be good to linear linearize the sign. It is possible if this difference is quite small. For this, you have to set tau which is much less than a period of the 30 Hertz. Then, at this condition, you can linearize the sign. Obviously, this time again is just an approximation. So it's not exact math, and it's also a difficult point to accept. But as at the end it works, well, it is accepted. Then again, here, in this time difference, we can identify something which is proportional to the first derivative of this angle. And remember, as it is a frequency modulation, this phase derivative is the information we are looking for. So at the end of this FM demodulation blocks, we have what we expected, that is the first derivative of the phase. The second interesting block is a phase comparator. Well, I think I will be out of time. So maybe I'm going to go fast on this and more. It's OK. Seven minutes. So OK, let, let me detail this a little bit. Um, so this phase comparator is needed to extract the phase of interest. Remember, we have to make the difference between the two cosine arguments. One is from um, the baseband component at 30 Hertz, and the second one is at the output of the FM demodulation block. It is an opportunity to introduce the students with the ear block concept, so that at the end, their software receiver is not just a huge amount of individual blocks. The students are asked, it is mandatory, to embed their phase comparator into an ear block. We have here a possible implementation of this phase comparator block. This is not given to the student this time. We go a little bit farther in the signal processing uh, autonomy. They have to design their own phase comparator. Here I give also the corresponding flow diagrams. They have to build one by their own. What is interesting here is that this ear block, they are asked to develop it independently from their main diagram, and they also have to test it with an independent flow diagram. We think that it is a good practice for a big development to process uh, in this way. So, some detail of the calculations for those who are interested in. 
We have 230 hertz signal at the input of this phase comparator block, and what we want is to recover the phase difference. So, first step, we produce a delayed version of the first input. In this way, we are able to produce here a phase shift. Now, if this phase shift is exactly equal to one over four times the carrier frequency at 30 hertz, then in fact, we have a phase shift of pi over two here, which enables us to convert this cosine into a sine. This is useful in the two cross products we are going to produce in a second step here. We have a cosine multiplied by a cosine and a sine multiplied by a cosine. More on this later. At this point, please note that the two cross product component here have the same amplitude, whatever the input amplitude of the two signals. They can be different, there is no problem. I have developed here the product of the cosine and the sine. What you can see is that we have our two terms of interest here, a cosine of the phase difference and a sine of the phase difference. We just have to discard these two terms here. We can remark that these two terms in frequency are located around two times FC, that is 60 Hertz. We want here to select this time which is time constant. So with low pass filters, we can suppress these two terms. And after filtering, it remains only this cosine term and this sine term. We can just input them into an Atan 2 function. In new radio, it is called complex to arc block. And then at the output, we have recovered our phase difference, which was the objective of this VOR receiver. It's time to draw some conclusions. Um, what I can say is that it is the third year this long project is given. So now we have reached the stable part of the curve and we are able to see the result of this project. What we can say is, what, is that it is clearly um, it, this project has clearly reached its uh, initial objective, which was to give a larger understanding of signal theory and signal processing to the students. We can see that their knowledge and their skill are greatly improved using this kind of project. And that's all for my presentation. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. One or two questions because uh, now time is done, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you. One short question before lunch. Um, wh why don't... Uh, uh, why did you convert all the signals to real signals? Why don't you use complex phasor exponentials? The students in the third year should be able to handle uh, complex numbers. Um, you mean in my flow diagram, maybe? Yeah. O also in the flow diagram, you have real uh, signals. But um, the, the down-converted signal stream is an I and Q data stream. Yes. And then we um, somehow only... Um, work with real signals, with cosines and sines. We could also use complex exponentials here. Oh, yes, okay. Um, and, and this would be, let's say, more realistic. Uh, well, I would say, as it is an amplitude modulation, um, the real modulating signal is real. So to recover it under the form of a real signal, as soon as possible, um, 
seem natural to us. And um, physical signal is real, I mean. Yes, so, physical signal. So you can work it out uh, just by using real signals, and that's fine. Um. Thank you for the presentation. I just wanted to know how long uh, the student had uh, for uh, ah. finalizing the project. Okay, it is widespread over several months. Uh, I think it's uh, three or four months. Uh, they can work on their own as they want. We have regular um, sessions with them. If they are stuck on a specific problem, we are able then to help them. But it's on a, yes, three or four months.